Welcome to Tequidia Daily of Tequidia Mini MBA. I'm DBC Gateway. Our conversation today will focus on digital marketing. Essentially, we'll be looking at how we can grow our businesses, uh, grow our companies by using content. So the first element here is to understand that in the 21st century, supply is in abundance. In other words, there are so many entities, there are so many companies that are offering anything that you are offering. The implication is this, because of the internet, the world has flattened. You are both global and also local at the same time. So you have something on the web and you are living in Lagos and someone has something on the web and he is living in New York. Both of you are largely global competitors depending on the structural nature of that particular product or service. So what is happening here is that people can find things, whatever they need, easily because that information asymmetry has been reduced. And because of that, of that information asymmetry, the competition has intensified because everyone is local and global. So because of that, you now see how technology systems are now becoming extremely powerful in that construct between demand and supply. So it's not just the guy who controls supply that wins, but the person who actually has access to demand. Demand are the users, demand are the customers. And then interestingly, because they have that influence on the customers, they become very powerful. So if there is a major news outbreak today in Lagos, there is the propensity that many people will first go to Google to type before they start looking at Guardian newspaper in Nigeria, Vanguard, or these days. The same thing in America, if there is a breaking news coming up, most people are most likely going to go to Google and say, check it out or go to Twitter or check or go to Facebook before they start looking at their local newspapers. What is happening here is that they understand that the power has shifted from the suppliers of the news, the content creators, to those that have the demand under their control. So Google, which does not really create the news, now determines among all those suppliers, the best possible company it can actually take you to. So that means the power has shifted from the news creators to those that are actually helping to aggregate the news. The same thing happens in logistics. Uh, the, the, the guy who owns his car, who drives a Uber, is not really very, very powerful. He is a supplier, and suppliers are largely unbounded and unconstrained. And because of that construct, most of them are not very, very powerful. So the power wrecks on Uber, who does not necessarily drive the vehicle, does not necessarily have the supply, but has become exceedingly powerful because it has the demand under its control. You can also say the same thing on Airbnb and the landlords. The landlords are great. They are the people that provide the supply, but Airbnb has power over them. So because of these elemental constructs, there are redesigns in market systems, a situation where people can now say, I do not need to go to an investment banker before I can do an IP that is taking my company into the public market. Because the information, we have, in the past, only the investment bankers had information about that company. But today, because of digital systems, we already have insights how all these companies are doing. You can check the number of people uh, they have by looking at the traffic patterns to their website. You can check how they are doing by going to LinkedIn and see how many people they've employed. And all these things are things that were not possible before before the age of, of the internet. So in other words, companies will say, we don't really need somebody in between us before we can take this particular product, uh, this company into the public market. Because the people that are supposed to buy the stock, they say the retail investors, they already have a very good understanding of what we do. And because of that, they now disintermediate the investment bankers, telling them you are not necessary. The key thing here is there is now authenticity and trust. That authenticity and trust has come because information asymmetry has been removed. In other words, the person who has knowledge in the past, they supply. And the person who needed it, and vice versa, 
both of them are tending a new equilibrium point where the demand knows so much about the supply and the supply knows so much about the demand. And that is the reason why you could enter a vehicle from Uber. That is a stranger. Remember when your mother told you, please don't enter a car of a person you don't know, a stranger. But today you do that. And you do that with so much confidence. And you remember the time your grandmother told you, please, my son, my daughter, don't go and sleep in a stranger's house. But that's what you do on Airbnb. But what Airbnb has done is that it has used digital tools to remove that information asymmetry, making it possible that we can use digital technologies to bring authenticity and trust in that system. And when you do that, great things happen. And how do you connect that to digital marketing? It comes down to thought leadership. It comes down to thought leadership in the sense that winning a market system is not really about just let me go and publish the best possible content. It's actually figuring out how you can have demand. If people are not there to read you, if you do not have access to them, you can be the best possible professor with the best idea in a university and just only your journals, maybe 10, 20 people will read them in, in three months. But now you are actually going into the business where you need scale. It requires a new dimension. And that's where you bring in that element of authenticity and trust because people need to trust that if you want to sell them something, they want to believe that you are credible to actually give them a direction. So the biggest challenge here is that the largest in digital advertisement is very, very challenging in Africa because our conversion rate is low. And that is the reason why an IP address in US could be valued more than an IP address, let's say in Gambia. So if you have 1,000 users in US and uh, traffic in US and another person has 20,000 from Gambia, Somebody will say, I prefer the ones in the U.S. Because out of those 1,000 people, you could sell them things, and most places, 10% of them are interested in those things. But there is a propensity that in Gambia that no one will be interested because they do not have that purchasing power. So the point is this, that when you are not writing, you begin to ask yourself, how do I shape this content? Who are those customers that I actually want to buy? It's not a question of just getting clicks to your website. That is the reason... I don't really post so much on Facebook. I don't post so much on Twitter because I have looked at the numbers. You post in Facebook, a lot of people will come, but at the end of the day, there's no conversion because the people that are there are not in the mood to spend money. They are there to talk about family things, talk about friends things, watch their clips. They are not in that mood. And Twitter people are also, they are not necessarily in that mood. But when you get traffic from LinkedIn, is the gold standard in business. In other words, I have to now shape my conversation and content, project it in a way that it can appeal to people within the LinkedIn community so that when they come to, let's say, to tequila.com, we now have the capacity to convert them to pay. We don't put so much effort on Facebook because Facebook gives you those traffics. You don't really get anything out of those. So, your supply may not really be the key thing here. The key thing here is, even if you go to that link and you have demand, do you have people that are ready to listen to you? It's not a question that you have prepared the best possible on your product service. It's a question, do you have the capacity to influence that demand? And that's the reason why we are having the influencers, the micro-influencers. What is happening there, that these are people that have the demand. And because they have the demand before them, there is a propensity that they can help you to convert into to sell. So my challenge for you in 2021 is that you need to discover your space and be known for something. Is it in the business space, in the technology space? Is it in fashion? Is it in beauty? You need to be known for something so that when you speak, people will pay attention on that. And it's not a question of I am good in everything. It's not a question that I can just go online, I write about electronics, the next morning I'm talking of e-commerce, the next day I'm talking about uh, shoes, I'm talking about lipstick. No. Create an imagery around yourself so that when you speak on that particular topic, people pay attention. And if you can make that possible, the, the, the thing here is that when you now ask them to pay, 
that conversion begins to happen. There is a positive correlation. Invest in content. See your numbers improve in business. Use the frictions to conversion. Problem here is that if they come, they do not trust you. They do not trust that you can deliver that thing you say you deliver. They will read the content. They may not really like to convert. Because if you want to sell them, let's say, an educational material, how can they pay for something that they don't have confidence that that thing will be of value? So the question here for you is how do you reduce that friction? How do you reduce that inertia so that they can pay? Knowing and having the confidence that you are going to be consistently add value to them. So it's a very, very key thing here. And I'll tell you this thing that don't make it be like I have to focus on supply in everything I do. The age of digital marketing is not just seeing advertisement and clicking and going to the website. The most critical aspect is converting those traffics into real hits in the bank account. And if you are not doing it, you run into difficulty. I have seen people that say, okay, I want to spend 1 million, 2 million, 3 million naira, and they want to run a campaign for one week, two weeks. At the end of the day, they say, it's not working. I say, it is not working because when the people come to your site, you have not invested in the demand side of the business through thought leadership for people to have the confidence that what you are trying to sell to them in some specific domains of product service and services that they can have confidence to pay. So you invest in it. That is a gold standard today. And I also want to challenge you to think about how you 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 pursue that that mission of sustainability as you do this it's not a question of you do that one month and you disappear for weeks you come back again people want to be sure that if they are coming that you are also going to be ready to be giving them what they want because it's a competition it's no more a question that i have to assource it to the head of marketing it's no more a question i have to assource it to the gm of marketing it's a question that everyone especially ceo must be growth makers you must be a growth champion and a growth champion means that you need to project your brand. You need to give people that identity that this brand represents whom I am. And I am ready to invest my identity into that brand. That's the reason when you poke something online, more people comment on it than when your company profile does that. Because people associate with individuals more than companies to a large extent. If that individual is broken, that company has a problem. So I invite you also remember to check in with Media MBA registration continues. We're just about starting, and I'm very confident we'll continue this conversation, explaining, understanding the mechanics of market system, building how we can combine recombine factors of production to drive leverages and advance the wealth in our companies, the wealth in our communities, and of course the wealth of nations. Thank you so much. Do be safe, everyone. Take care, day.